to be in the presence of the Lord and get to worship with you ladies. We already have felt the presence of the Lord. Sister Sharon, I'm glad you got here. I was looking for her. Love you too, Baba. You ladies can just be seated. Um, the Lord gave me this, the beginning of this message on the morning, real early in the morning on Father's Day. So it's been a, been a while. And since then, this message from the Lord has been confirmed many times. And I even thought, does, does Sister Leanne, does Sister Kim, and Sister Rita have my notes? So I know what the Spirit is saying to the church. But I'm, I don't have a whole lot of fluff. So let's all just sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. Can everybody hear in the back? Everybody hears pretty good? Okay. So everybody, please stay with us for every moment. We're going somewhere together that the Lord gave us this word, okay? It's for all every lady here, whether you're married, unmarried, single, a grandmother, a mother, never been a mother. It's for every woman here. I'm glad this nice podium is big. Okay. Titus 2 and 5. This is for the women to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Before I get started, if some of y'all are thinking, oh, I know where this is going. No, you don't. I didn't. So you can't. It's not possible. <laughs> the Lord had to get me there because I had kept saying, Lord. Anyway, I want to pick out one word here. Keepers. And if you study that out further than just the initial um, translation, it means um, guard, watcher, guardian. And even though it says up here, obedient to their own husbands, that doesn't get you unmarried off the hook. It's still for you because you have a house to guard. What am I guarding? Romans 12 and 1. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We're talking about purpose. And hang on to living sacrifice and holy. Genesis 15, 11. And I'm going to read. This is an apostolic study Bible. They are wonderful. If you don't have one when you can save up, get one and in this genesis 15 11 what has gone on is god has given abraham or abram some promises and he said and he said i am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward but he'd given abraham some promises and in six it said and he believed the lord and he counted it to him for righteousness but really what happened next is he asked the lord he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? So he's got some promises from God. He believes the Lord, and he wants to know, how am I going to know I'm going to inherit this? Now, this is powerful. Get If you have the apostolic Bible with you, you can look it up and read it with me, because this is down in the commentary, okay? At the bottom it says, this is a little bit lengthy, but not too bad. It's worth it. The following verses contain the sign that Abram sought from the Lord. Because he was saying, how will I know? He said, the procedure described what would have been familiar to Abram, but may seem exceedingly strange to modernize verses 9 to through 21 following the general outline of a formal covenant Ceremony in which the parties of the covenant pass between the severed bodies of sacrificial animals, symbolizing that such should be their fate if they broke the covenant promises. So that was common practice back then, that they would both walk through the bloody sacrifices, and that would be their fate if either one broke the covenant. Except, Sister Steph, we're just getting started. I knew you'd be here. However, in this case... God alone walked the bloody path of sacrifice because he offered Abram a unilateral covenant. 
Only one was paying the sacrifice. God was walking that bloody sacrifice alone. There weren't two. It was unilateral. One was walking the covenant. And listen to this. Abram needed only to preserve the covenant by driving away the fowls that would desecrate it. Now, fowls that eat off of dead things, we know as vultures. So for the sake of the picture and you seeing it, we're going to go with vultures. But we know in 1511 it said, And when the fowls came down upon the carcass, Abraham drove them away. He was guarding the sacrifice. He was guarding the sacrifice of the covenant. Desecrate means to treat a sacred place or anything, sacred place or thing, a sacred place or thing with violent disrespect. Jesus was the fulfillment of all that the Old Testament pointed toward. He was the final sacrifice. Stay with me. You can't miss any of this, okay? 2 Samuel 11 and 11. Okay, what has just happened here is we know the story of David. He sinned with Bathsheba. She conceived. Uriah goes out to war. He has Uriah come back in, and he wants Uriah to lie with his wife and cover up his sins. But what has happened is Uriah didn't go down. He slept at the king's door with the servants all night long. He did not go in unto his wife. And when David found out this in 11... Here's the, the scripture before is when this happened, but the, in 11 is what we're going to look at. And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Then shall I go into my own house to eat and drink and to live with my wife as thou livest and as my soul livest. I will not do this thing. Uriah knew the ark was in the camp, and they needed to be protecting the ark of the covenant. So, in the next verse, which we don't have, um, Uriah, even drunk. David gets Uriah drunk, but do you know even drunk? Uriah had more sense than David did. He still, even drunk, went and lay out, laid at the king's door with the servants. He would not. We're talking about purpose. We're talking about guarding the sacrifice. Proverbs 31 woman is, a virtu is virtuous because she is spiritually minded. Your spiritual perception is needed to guard your home. You remember what we learned in the beginning? You are the keeper of the home. You are the guard, the watcher of the house. Your spiritual perception is needed to guard your home. 2 Kings 4, 8 and 9. We're talking about the Shunammite woman. And it fell on the day... That Elisha passed to Shuman, and there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that oft as he passed by, he turned in hither to eat bread. Number nine, and she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive this is a holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. See, she perceived he was a holy man of God. And in turn, what was the result? She received the desires of her heart. She received, received protection, provision. The miraculous happened. She had her son raised up. We're talking about guarding the sacrifices, the things that are holy. It's the devil's business to kill, steal, and destroy. And he is going to use emotional attacks. Brother, G, Brother King told us this the other night. He's going to use the battles in your mind to try to come through you. To come through you. You are the keeper the watcher, the guard, uh, guardian of the home. He's going to try to make you feel like a failure. It's a tactic. He's going to try to make you feel guilty. And women are the worst. We don't need help feeling guilty. We've already feel enough guilt. And he wants you to get discouraged and feel like, I remember at one time, and I'm sorry, girls, because y'all are just the ones here and you have to, your mom's up here. But um, the, my children were younger, 
even younger adults, and they were going through some painful choices. And I was sitting on the side of my bed, and I've told Sister Steph this before. I felt so guilty. I felt like such a failure as a mother that if I'd have done this, if I'd have done that, if I'd have... And the Lord whispered to me, spoke to me in the spirit, and he said, my children didn't listen to me either. And I was like, well... And then I thought, and I've read the genealogy before where it's going in so-and-so begat so and it said, and Adam, which was the son of God, his children didn't listen either. And they were more protected than we ever are protected. It lifted me up. God lifted me up. But he wants us to become despondent in watching the sin of that our children, families get into. He wants us to back up and become despondent. Such despair and let watch the vultures come in. Now, with Rezpah, we know that her she fanned, she guarded the vultures. Sin is used as a type of death in the Bible many times but while sin was there she didn't allow them to be devoured because she fanned those vultures off of them and we have to do that sometimes in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I plead your blood over them I pray a covering over them I pray the shield of faith over them and fan fan that off there fan the vultures away from the covenant fan the vultures away from the sacrifice a man once told me that he said I'm upset their son was sick look like unto death he said I am so upset he said but she is obsessed it's different I don't know what it feels like to be a man or hear their calling on their life because I'm not one the most masculine thing I have is sweating like one that's all I that's all I want I didn't ask for that but Sometimes we get upset and think, why are they not carrying some of this that I'm feeling? The battle is not theirs for this. It's yours. You are the guard, the keeper of the house. You are the guarder. You guard the guardian of the sacrifice. Jochebed protected Moses, but at one point... He had to make a decision, but she protected him. Covered that already. You cannot fight something that is going on in the spirit with your flesh. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. That means prayer and oftentimes intercession, quoting the word, desperate measures, fasting, Sometimes I think desperate measures are getting out of the bed. I'm not suggesting this, but I can tell you I've done it. Getting out of the bed, get in the car, duster on, <laughs> no teeth brushed, driving around, pleading the blood of Jesus. You see a freak outside your house, it's your mama. <laughs> I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. Ooh, my kayando on my high. Lord, I plead your blood over my children. Devil, you're not getting up. I pray a shield of faith, fanning the vultures away. The sacrifice, the covenant is inside of you. The house, you house the sacrifice. You guard the, the sacrifice of your home. It's inside of you. The sacrifice is inside of you. There has been a breach. Did you hear what I said? There's been a breach. A breach that must be repaired. A breach is a break. It is the path. The path must be restored. 
This is an example. About the best one I have that I can understand. Y'all remember when that flood, the historic flood came? And at Wapapella? And it washed out that whole main road. Now, for years, my children and I, we, I drug them to Wapapella. I love to camp. And at first, well, anyway, we spent a lot of years going back and forth on the same path there. But Courtney and I drove over because I wanted to see it. She'd already seen it. And I, we were sitting there in the car and we tried to go around. And never mind, I knew this path. I'd been down this path for years. I was very familiar with this path. But when I got there and the path had been washed out, I was so disoriented. I really couldn't tell where one side and the other side and I was trying to think back of how we really got from there to here. Because I couldn't see it because the path was washed out. Jeremiah 6 and 16. We're talking about a breach, okay? Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where there is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Talking about the house of wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 1. Proverbs 9 and 1, wisdom has built her house, and she has hewn out her seven pillars. Hewn is to form or shape by blows with a sharp instrument. That sharp object is the word of God. And it can help us to hew out those qualities that need to be present in every woman's life. Seven signifies completeness. It is divine fullness, perfection. Wisdom is a quality of a, a woman can acquire. Wise is discerning or judging soundly what is true or false, proper or improper, while being discreet. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding is it established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. The house of wisdom is a house where she invites pupils for instruction. The wisdom, wisdom house has seven pillars. Proverbs 9 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The house of wisdom is characterized by desire for, for instruction. We're still talking about wisdom. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord... Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end, which is translated as a hopeful future. Still talking about wisdom. Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. So that relentless desire you all have to know, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I'm ordering books. I'm, list, I'm listening to sermons. You are sitting at his feet. You are reading the Bible, uh, commentaries, um, spending time in his word, going to the river, Sister Judy, to pray. 
It's because he has drawn you. He is drawing you. This is not in my notes, but I feel this. Surround yourself. Wise, the house of wisdom seeks counsel. Someone that you feel like is close to the Lord. And I, this is how I do it. I like to be, hear what Sister Judy has to say because she's real disciplined with the word. I know there's a lot of people that are disciplined with the word, but I don't get to talk to everybody all the time. But I know she's more disciplined with the word than I am because she's, she's read it every year, every year, every year. And I go from book here, book here, book here, book here, book here, book here, book here. I'm not as consistent, you know. So surround yourself with people like that. Sister Ruth has so much of the word. Um, I've learned so much from Sister Ruth. Sister Ruth doesn't even realize she's telling me stuff. And Sister Rita said she was, we were talking about Brother Eugene, and she said, I get to be with, I miss getting to be with Sister Ruth on our trips to Sykeston because she teaches me. She doesn't even know she's teaching me, but she's teaching me. I was like, Sister, I've been there. I know it. I love to hear the words come out of Sister Ruth's mouth. One time in one of my low points when I was younger and, and I, I was just struggling when I was younger. I, I was wanting to serve the Lord, and Sister Ruth said, you know, she doesn't say a whole lot, and she's real funny, but she said, the word of God will keep you. And she said, and when you don't have a husband, the Lord is your husband. Do you think I ever forgot that? No, and that was, I'm 51. I was probably 30. Only in prayer do we achieve that complete harmonious assembly of mind, body, and spirit, which gives the frail human need its unshakable strength. You can have some smooth sailing on some really rough waters. All because you've been in prayer, you're connected. 1 Peter 2 and 9, we're still talking about wisdom. You're guarding your house. You're guarding the sacrifice. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Consecrate yourself. Which means set yourself apart for holy use. For the service of the Lord. You are the priestess of your home. I got this nugget yesterday off of the Almighty Facebook. Y'all ready? Brother David Bernard yesterday. Singles can enjoy abundant, fulfilled life. Complete in Christ. It's better to be single in God's will than married out of God's will. I just started a book, and sometimes I'm like the pastor, and I'll start several things at one time, so I've only got a few chapters in. But uh, don't try to help God or hurry God with a spouse when you're single while he's got you in the waiting room. Do not. I've seen some beautiful women, anointed, strong character women, stoop down because they didn't wait on the Lord. Stoop down. People that weren't a man that was not a deserving of them. You want a godly man that loves the Lord more than you. Wait on the Lord. Let me tell you something. When God answers that prayer, it doesn't matter how long you waited for the Lord to take care of that. You don't even think of that anymore. He just did it. All you think is God has answered my prayer. So thankful he kept me from myself so many times when I want to take things in my own hands. Let the Lord take care of that. Proverbs 23, 12 and 23. We're still talking about wisdom. Apply thine heart into instruction and thine ears into the word of knowledge. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom, instruction, and understanding. You cannot guard the home 
without wisdom. You've got to have instruction. You've got to be taught. You've got to accept counsel. Or you cannot guard the house of the sacrifice. You cannot guard your home without it. We're still on wisdom. Proverbs 31, 23. Now when I read or even get near Proverbs 31, call me carnal, but... I almost can hear Wonder Woman music from when I was a kid coming on. Have you ever seen that, Linda Carter with the lasso, stars? When I read about this woman, I just don't, I can just hear that music. Her husband, I picked this out of 23, because this means something, because it wouldn't be in there. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Now, that has a lot to do with her or it wouldn't be in here because it's not talking about the husband so much it's the wife's influence on her home and her husband she's probably spent a lot of time in prayer lifting up her husband helping him push through the apostolic study bible says the husband this is the commentary at the bottom the husband of the virtuous woman is blessed by her wisdom and diligence. He, will, he is well thought of among the wise. Tear your husband down, you're tearing your house down. You tear your ministry's ministry down, you're tearing yourself down. The Lord said, and these two shall be one. You want to run him down? Guess what, sister? You're going down too. Build up your husband. So many times the things that they don't do is because we're so persnickety about stuff and we've got a way we want to do stuff and we really need to let them have a little bit of space and pray for them. Work on us. Work on ourselves in our prayer rooms. Work on us. Build him up. Pray a covering over your husband. Do not tear his ministry down. Everyone has a ministry. I've even heard, and I can't remember the whole story of Sister Nona Freeman at one time thinking that she was a lot more spiritual than her husband was because she was so much more emotional. And she prayed big prayers and stuff, and he was more to the point with the Lord. Well, you know, a lot of times men are not like us. They are not. I don't know what it's like to be a man. I don't want to know. I'm a woman, and I like being a woman, but... I can't say how they're feeling and how they, but they are not as verbal usually as we are with our emotions. Talk about the house of folly. Unwise women. Before I say any of this, this came from the Lord. I I wouldn't be a good judge of anybody because I love everybody here. I look into your faces. I love every one of these. These are the people I love the most. But sometimes you couldn't say the best thing for people you love. But the Lord can. Unwise women are stubborn. Stubborn, Brother Keene says, is self-worship. Nothing is more important than what they think. And do what they want without listening to counsel or those in authority. Proverbs 12 and 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkened unto counsel is wise. Seek counsel. These ladies that write these books, you know what I know for one thing. They've already fought the spiritual battle in their mind and their emotions to push through to write that. And their experiences, I'm like, it's okay, Lord. I don't have to go through that one. I'm going to trust Sister Haney. Or I'm going to trust Sister Freeman. Seek counsel. Powder your life after someone. If you Counsel is not just asking, it's watching. Don't watch somebody live as close to the world as they can be. Don't watch them. That lives right on the edge all the time or over the edge and hanging their feet over. 
Don't watch them. Don't take your counsel there. Do not. But he that hearkened unto the counsel is wise. We're talking about the house of folly. The house of folly uses her houses to seduce her victims. Who's that sound like? Satan. Through sensual promises. Proverbs 9, 13 through 18. It says, a foolish woman is clamorous. She's loud. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Number one, you know why she knoweth nothing? She doesn't want to know nothing. I know that's terrible English and my mother would faint. But it works. She doesn't know because she doesn't want to know. She doesn't want to seek counsel. She doesn't want instruction. And she doesn't want wisdom. That's a clamorous woman. Another thing that's noted with clamorous women, they're not quiet about it. It's not like they secretly sit over here and go, I'm unwise, and I'm stupid, and I'm I'm not watching, I'm on my way to hell, or I'm not even looking for my family. They're not quiet about it. It's, I don't have that conviction. I don't believe that anymore. We're still talking about a breach here. We're still talking about guarding the sacrifice. We're still talking about the covenant. I don't believe that anymore. Well, I hate it for you, sis. But the word says, and we're judged by the word. And we're going to be accountable by the word. And if you don't see it, it's because you're not looking. Get in the word. Don't say, I don't get it. Well, let me see here. Let's find some. And I will bring again the captive of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities. You know what that means? He's going to bring the captive of his people, and they're going to build again the waste cities. Let me find something else. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this, for what a, with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they came out. Do you know what that means? They were amazed. And it means that with the Lord's authority, the unclean spirits came out. What's hard about this? It's hard because you make it hard because you don't even want to look. You want to shut your eyes and keep walking. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Do you know what that means? It means they called them and they commanded them not to speak in the name of Jesus. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but this is so serious. You have to turn into the house of folly. You have to get off the beaten path to turn into the house of folly. And our purpose, we are the keepers of the home, the guard of the home, the guard of the sacrifice. Proverbs, I've read that one. Did I go on through all the way, 13 through 18? Or did I get sidetracked? Somebody tell me, I don't care. Okay, that's all right. This This is just how I roll sometimes. And it's okay. A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Well, I know y'all know what that part means. For she sitteth at the door of her house and on the seat of the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. You have to turn into the house of folly. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. And you have to choose to turn in there. The definition of folly is a lack of good sense, or normal prudence and foresight, Tragically foolish actions, evil wickedness, lewd behavior, or foolish act or idea. Let me ask you something. I'm winding down. 
But it's still not over because there's some more. Who was the most affected by Sodom? Who do you think in Lot's life, in Lot's family, was the most affected? His wife. You're right, Sister Terry. She didn't believe it. She didn't believe the messenger of God anymore. And she turned back. She, the guardian of the house was the most affected. Herodias. John the Baptist had said to Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother Philip's wife. Well, Herodias, first of all, no, she exploited her child. That isn't some sick mess, having her dance before them. And she had the man of God murdered. She did not want instruction. She did not want the voice of God in her life. I know this is a strong word. It's not my word. It's not my blood. It's not my sacrifice. You can murder with your mouth. Do not touch the man of God with your mouth. Under no circumstances. Do not touch the man of God with your lips. The man of God, the spirit of God, and the word of God are in agreement. Do not desecrate that which is sacred. We've heard that before. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, I'm not making this stuff up. It's the word. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You're going to eat the fruit thereof, whether it's death or life. Eve was beguiled because Satan uses the sensual. He promises there's some utopia awaiting that you've never experienced anymore in friends and in entertainment and in, a, in relationships. That you're going to be more than you ever were in the world. Well, you've already been in the world, most of us. And it wasn't out there then. It's still in out there. Not only that, Satan uses beauty. Your own beauty. God made us beautiful. I'm not going to even try to be humble or hide it. As far as when I walked in this church, oh, I guess it's close to 29 years ago, I could not believe how beautiful the women were. The young women, the middle-aged women, the older women. I thought, they can't even look get old and look older. I mean, look bad. They're beautiful. The older women are beautiful. You see things different with the Holy Ghost. You see things as they really are. I look in all your faces all the time. I talk to you all the time. Believe it or not, I don't say everything I'm thinking. I really don't. But most of the time I'm thinking they're beautiful. Their eyes are beautiful. They shine with the power of the Holy Ghost. Their demeanor is beautiful. They are beautiful. So many times Satan says, if you, your eyes are beautiful, you know if you would enhance them with this. Well, who do you think made you beautiful in the first place? Who made Satan beautiful in the first place? It came from God. I'm telling you, he will use it. He will even use your own beauty. My hair's, my hair's beautiful. Maybe if I put some more. I'm not going there. I'm not the pastor. I'm just telling you, we are to reflect his glory for his glory. He said we beautify us with meekness. I'm going to just throw this in. It's not in my notes. But if I had to choose between Chanel, Clinique, Mary Kay, Revlon, Cover Girl, I'd rather have the Lord making me beautiful. <laughs> Still talking about the house of folly, okay? Proverbs 1, where I really am wrapping up. I sound like Pastor King. <laughs> Proverbs 1, 28 and 29. Then shall they call upon me. This is in the house of folly that you willfully choice. You had to make a choice to turn in here. You had to make a choice to turn into this house. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. 
Then they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge, house of folly didn't want knowledge, didn't want counsel, didn't want instruction, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Last one of the house of folly. Where would the prodigal son have been if while he was wasting everything he had, where would he have been if when he landed in the hog pen, if the father's house had not been intact? If the breach would have affected the father's house? Where would the prodigal have gone? Where would have been the hope for his son? We are not to go wallow and drag those things which are holy and cast pearls before swine. Keep the house intact. Guard the sacrifice. We house the sacrifice. And what if there was no Abraham in Lot's life? You notice the Lord never said, and then God remembered Abraham, I mean Lot. Uh-uh. It was then God remembered Abraham. Colossians 6 through 10. Every, I know this seems like a strong word, but it's not my word. Just the messenger. I'm just the mouthpiece. It's not my blood. It's not my sacrifice. It is my covenant. And as ye therefore receive Christ, Jesus of the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye would have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. Everything we need, just like the Shunanite woman. The desires, the protection, the provision, the miraculous in your life. All of it's in him. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You can tell which door you're seated at, what kind of condition your house is in. If you're seated at the house of wisdom or at the house of folly by how you receive this message let's all repent be the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to walk in the guardian of the sacrifice of the new covenant who knows if thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Let's all gather around up here and let's just spend a little time in the presence of the Lord.